Hey guys, Luke here again, and in this video, we're going to talk about how you can get upwind. So, we're going to talk about three different tips for getting upwind or, or getting further upwind. So, of course, the first time you ever get upwind, it's a fantastic day. Pretty much everyone can remember the first time they ever rode upwind because finally you're not doing the walk of shame. You know, you've gone out, you can come back in, you're on the same spot or even better. And it means that you really become a bit of an independent kiter where you can actually go kite surfing and come back to the same spot. So of course, it's really exciting and really important. But even as you progress in your kite surfing, um, you know, you might use upwind riding in another way. So for instance, once you start doing big jumps, you lose a lot of ground downwind or maybe you ride waves downwind. And so you wanna have sort of the ability to make a nice tack, really remake all of that all of that ground really easily. So then you can go and do that again and it's a lot of fun to do some more jumps and ride more waves. So like I said, we're gonna cover three topics. Uh, one is your speed, one is your body position, and one is your edge control. So we're gonna go through them one by one. So first off, we're gonna talk about speed. Uh, so the first tip is to slow down. Uh, it might not be so, uh, if you're learning, you know, maybe it's not so obvious why you need to slow down. And so slowing down actually does allow you, just the act of slowing down or staying slow does really allow you to tack upwind further. And you can achieve that really by one, uh, you know, just not gaining a lot of speed, but two, sort of having your kite a little bit higher and that just sort of keeps you a little bit slower and it allows you to tack up into the wind. And so just gonna draw a quick diagram and talk about why that is, and then we'll, we'll get on to number two. So what we've got is today, the wind's sort of coming at my back. So it's kind of running down downwind like this. That's the direction of the wind. And as we might know, you, you sort of you sort of tack sort of across the wind like this. So you sort of tack like this off the beach, going back, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out. Now that's sort of your perpendicular line or, or riding across the wind. Now today at the moment the wind's probably blowing, let's call it 15 knots. So the wind's sort of coming down the beach at 15 knots, running down the beach. So they, this is our perpendicular line. Once we start going out though, then we start to create some wind of our own and this is called apparent wind. And it means that once we start traveling, okay, inducing some wind in that speed, once we start in, in that direction, then the wind can't sort of come from two places at once. Okay, so it's not hitting us on the back of the head plus in the face, it morphs into one direction and the wind direction actually changes. And when that wind direction actually changes, it becomes a combination of the, the direction we're going and the true wind, which is what the planet is sort of creating. And so it turns the wind and it starts creating a bit of a different direction. So if, we, if the wind was blowing at 15 knots and we were traveling this way at 15 knots, then the wind would morph around into one wind and this would be the new wind direction. When that happens, our perpendicular line changes, like this. So now we're riding out that way, and you can see we start losing ground down the beach because we're going faster, right? And so as we start to increase our speed, the faster we go, the more the wind comes around in this direction, which means the worse it is for staying upwind, and the slower we go, the closer the, the wind, the apparent wind direction will be, which means the closer we can stay actually into the wind. And so that's the number one tip, first tip for today, is to slow down. If you wanna start getting upwind and you wanna make a good tack, and that's something that I do personally, you're out there having a good time, you're doing jumps, you're riding waves, whatever, and then you think, oh, I've lost a bit of ground here, slow down, and then we'll go through the other two tips, but just that act of slowing down will allow you to make one big tack and really come a lot further upwind. Okay, so tip number two is all about body position. So when you're learning, uh, basically, you might be getting up on the board and you feel like you sort of need to stand on top of it. And so you'll see a lot of beginners, both hands on the bar, sort of above, standing above their board, sort of in this sort of stance. And that can sort of indicate two things. One is that they're overpowered, or two, that they haven't really worked on their stance yet or their body posture. And so in this tip, we're just gonna go how you can correct, go through how you can create, correct, correct your body posture. 
posture a little bit. So the first thing that you want to do, and if you look at anyone out there on the water and you think, wow, they're really ripping, you know, they're really good kiteboarder, then you'll see that their body posture is really quite straight. And so what you want to do is try and sort of focus on bringing your shoulders back and pushing your hips sort of forward a little bit. And while you're getting used to this, you might even need to exaggerate it a little bit if you haven't, uh, you know, you haven't done it yet. It's sort of like, think about really pushing your foot and just like really relax like this, okay? And what that will do is just get you in the idea of sort of trying to straighten your body, straighten your body out. Now, the second thing is to try and release, to get upwind, is to try and release that front hand. Because <clears throat> once you can sort of ride along laying into your kite a little bit and releasing your front hand then it opens your chest it opens your hips and it starts to move everything upwind and that's where that's the point that we want to get to once we, when we have our hand on the front of the bar like this we're really closing ourselves off to get up into the wind right so i've got the wind at my back and i want to be heading up that way but you know it's going to keep pulling me down this way unless i sort of open my chest drop this hand, let my hips rotate a little bit and sort of look in the direction that I want to go. And so that is probably one of the biggest parts. Once you've sort of relaxed into the kite, dropped your front hand, you can spot the direction that you actually want to travel and then you can sort of start heading there. So a lot of that comes from trusting the kite just getting used to the fact that the chicken loop is holding you around your waist and just relaxing into that and letting the kite take some of that pressure and instead of trying to stand on top of the board and stay balanced on top of the board trust the kite a little more relax into it a little more if you have to emphasis on sort of putting your hips forward your shoulders back open that front arm and then you can head off in the direction that you want to go okay so tip number three is about edge control now edge control is one of those things that you're going to be forever working on and like when I talk about your body posture and your kite position and your edge control, I'm still working on that too, okay? I haven't arrived, you know? There's, there's always a little, few more little tweaks and, and a f more fine tuning that you can do in your own riding style to improve it. But we're just gonna talk about the basics of edge control and what you can sort of look for in order to help you drive up in that little bit more as well. So I think probably one of the biggest things about edge control uh, is that a lot of the time, you know, we've got the wind on my back and we want to head out across the wind. And a lot of the time you hear sort of straighten your front leg and bend your back leg, you know, so you're sort of putting weight over your, over your back leg. But I don't really tend to agree with that because if I have both my hands on the bar like this and all I do is sort of like, you know, I'm bent like this and I just straighten that leg, all that happens is I move like this. And that doesn't really help you get upwind at all. What helps you get upwind is actually twisting your hips in the direction you want to go. And when you twist your hips in the direction that you want to go, like this, what it does is automatically straighten your front leg and bend your back leg. So you're sitting like this, and then as you twist your hips in the direction you want to go and rest into it, you can see you start, that, lens sort of, that leg sort of extends a little bit and the back leg sort of bends a little bit. That's the position that you want. Just like we already talked about, dropping that front hand, twisting those hips. Now we're sort of pushing, we've got more weight and more power on that, on that back leg and that front leg sort of relieved of a little bit of pressure. Because in order to drive upwind, we really do want to have good edge control, meaning that you know, we've got a really firm grasp in the water. The board is really, it's not slipping, Right? It's really, you can feel it cutting through the water and that's really what helps you continue to, you know, to, to push. But, two things might happen. When, you know, if you even out the pressure onto your front foot, then what might happen is you start to slip. So both feet, even pressure might, might sort of push the board away and you start to lose ground. Or, if you just are really heavy edging, too much then what will happen is you'll just keep edging too much and you'll actually slow down the kite won't be able to pull you so much anymore and you'll just sort of sink and slow down which means you're going to lose a lot of ground so it's a it's a bit of a um you know 
it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a feel with the kite and the water and your speed. And so that's what we're gonna talk about right now. What happens is, if we just come down here, if you're learning, if you're brand new to kite surfing, you probably look out at the people out there and you think, they're not doing anything. All they're doing is standing on their board and just edging up wind, you know? And you're thinking, well, how come I can't edge up wind? So you think that, you know, in your mind, and this is the same for me, you think, okay, they've got their kite there and all they're doing is just going like this, out. They're just on their heels and they're just burning out to sea and getting up wind. However, what happens and it becomes muscle memory and so it's, it's almost hard to explain sometimes, is that what's really happening is many, many, many micro movements from the edge and the bar. So the edge control, oh, a couple of kites dropping out my wind there. So the edge control basically consists of, yeah, using your edge to sort of drive through the water, but also using your bar to sheet out that little bit, or maybe that in a little bit, as you're going along to keep a constant sort of pressure that you need. So what is really happening when you're kiteboarding is you might be edging really hard and then releasing a little bit downwind and then edging and then releasing and edging. Now it might not look really aggressive or snake-like because it's such a subtlety. However, that's what's really happening and the edging is allowing the kite to generate more power and speed. It's allowing you to pick up more speed so you can continue to play it on the water. Uh, so sort of letting off a little bit and then edging hard again is where you start making really solid ground. But the harder you edge, then all of a sudden you start slowing down a little bit. And so you're off a little bit, applying a bit more pressure to your toes, allowing you to speed up again, allowing the kite to generate more speed again. And then you might edge again. And so it's that subtlety mixed with your bar in and out, in and out, that really gets those people when you see some people just absolutely staying up wind and they're on smaller kites than everyone and they're doing better than everyone. That's what they're doing there. They're really in tune with what they have to do with their bar and also, you know, with their board. So think about that for your edge control. Think about, you know, twisting your hips. Just same with the body positioning, laying back into it a little bit looking in the direction that you want to go, sheeting out a little bit, and sort of keeping that speed up as you go with your kite a little bit higher. Okay, you want to keep your kite at around about 45 degrees, a little bit higher in the sky. If you want to get up wind, you don't want your kite all the way down on the bottom, okay? You want it up there at around about 45 degrees. And you want, you know, to keep a sort of nice, consistent speed, using your edge to keep your speed, using your bar to keep your speed, shoulders back, hips forward, hips twisted, looking in the direction that you want to go, even a little bit further upwind than you think you want to go, and slow down, and I think you're going to find it a lot easier to get upwind. And so what we're going to do right now is one example. I'm going to head out here. I'm going to go as fast as I can with bad posture. I'm going to come back and we'll see where we end up on the beach. And then I'm going to just do what we just talked about. I'm going to take another tack, and we'll see where we come back and we'll, and we'll see the difference. So let's get on the water and see how it goes. run bad body and I really like tried to go as fast as I could it's a bit light on the 9.5 a lot of people riding 12s and stuff but that's perfect it's also harder to get up wind when it's light so now we'll do the uh, slow test with a good posture and we'll see how it goes
see that that was a um, big difference from one tiny little tack. Like, I only went, you know, not too far out and made a huge difference. Obviously, I came in pretty much at the same spot on the first run and way out the beach on the second one from one little tack. So, I hope that that was a helpful video. Thanks for watching, guys. Of course, subscribe. Leave us any comments if you have any questions. We're looking for other videos to make, so if you have ideas, things you'd like covered, we'd love to hear about it. And again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.